Dime Four in the know with high profile real estate executive Tom Diller. This show covers everything about today's market from real estate, lending, investing news, market news, and more. The greatest thing is, hear from real estate market insiders and the market's movers and shakers. Be in the know with Tom Diller. Without further ado, here is the host of our show, Mr. Tom Diller. Good afternoon, everybody. You've tuned in to KQCK Live in beautiful Santan Valley. Love that background music. You know what? I need a theme song, I think. We were talking about that last really time. Really, you do, Can Marie huh? sing me, a, do a theme song for she me if I wrote it or can. something? I would think so. That would be totally cool. I need a theme song. But anyways, before we get started, we have a just an outstanding show tonight. Got a couple of shout-outs here. Jen Lynch in Westlake Village. Love that place. I used to live in Thousand Oaks for I think about a year and a half. I was transferred down there. So I love it over there. Jen, thank you for listening. And then we have a birthday, 48th birthday for Mary in Scottsdale. Happy birthday to you. Um, Hope you're going to have a good time tonight, whatever you do. And then somebody asked uh, one of our guests, Dr. Harold Wong, to do a shout-out for Amber Lynn in San Diego. So, Harold, say. Hey, Amber Lynn, may you have the best year ever. There you go. Thank you. And our guest tonight, um, two very special guests. We have one repeat guest here. Um, you know, uh, Sally Shino, uh, when she was on last time, we were joking about her name, that she sounded like a movie star, and she got a little mad because we made her uncomfortable. So we kept talking about how good she looks, and, and she looks even better this time, the second time around. I don't, doesn't she? You know what? I'll tell you what. It looks like, um, I mean, to me, it looks like you've been working out at least 22, 23 days. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, at least. <laughs> Yeah, she's going to backhand me because she knows it uh, on her Facebook. What? She's oh, did you really? Well, I was going to say she, it looks more like 28 days in a row. At least. At least. At least. I was going to say 30, but I didn't want to look like, you know, I was it's being. a 90-day challenge. You know what I mean? So you're, you're, you're looking great, days by the night. way. Yeah, you do look good. Didn't notice yeah. that immediately. Yeah, her hair looks fluffy kind of thing. I don't know. It's just kind of wild tonight. Or I don't know. No, she's gonna be, I'm going to need security to walk me out tonight. She's just going <laughs> to. <laughs> Sally, how are you doing, Sally Shino from Shino and Associates? I'm doing good. Uh, she's a big-time realtor in the East Valley, and she's here to talk about some of the numbers and the statistics. Um, so thank you for coming back. Thank Appreciate you. it. And then Dr. Harold Wong. i got to tell you a little story before I fully introduce him. A couple months ago, uh, part of what I do is working at First American is we have a lot of classes and seminars to educate realtors and investors and lenders. And we had a class with uh, our good friend, Attorney Jim Eckley. And here comes this gentleman walking in the door, and he says, Hi, my name's Harold. He's got this deep voice look at him and I recognize him I'm like Dr. Harold Wong from the Bay Area he said yes (laughs) I said I used to live in the Bay Area I remember you on TV used to be on TV all the time you're like I don't want to say big time but yeah you're kind of a big time economist and you want you you're a professor at UC Berkeley right Uh, that's correct and uh, uh, part of what kept me at Berkeley for 20 years is not just the academic side I actually worked my way up to uh, coaching the National Collegiate Championship Taekwondo team at UC Berkeley. You, you're a professor, black belt, crazy guy that can kick butt and teach at the same time. Well, you know, teaching martial arts was great because if they students didn't listen, you would just kick and knock them down, <laughs> and then it got their attention. You know, I used to teach Taekwondo as well. Isn't that amazing? And, and the cool thing is he could kick and knock somebody down. They didn't even know who did it. He was just like, a boom, boom, boom. They're knocked right down on the ground. On. Like, who did that? Yes. And that's him. But anyways, thank you for coming out here. It's uh that it's very awesome. impressive. Yeah, it's you know, when I posted that he was gonna be here, I, I think instantly thousands of people read the article that I posted on there. And and thank you again. I, I just had you at one of our luncheons. I, I'm part of several different minority boards and one of them is the Asian Real Estate um, Association of America. And we had our installation for the board members, um, who I happen to be on, and Harold did a speech, um, which was just fantastic posted it on Facebook, so I haven't seen it yet, take a peek at it, but he talked about, uh, you know, life after the fiscal cliff and what to expect in 2013, and that's kind of why you're here, so thank you. And in fact, the the title of today's show is a lengthy one, How Does Real Estate Affect Investing? How Does Real Estate Investing Reduce Traditional Portfolio Risk and Increase Cash Flow? Now, there's a mouthful. It's basically, how can you use real estate investment to lose less money in your portfolio? Well, basically, what I'd like to do is do something that probably has never been done on a real estate show because you got the infomercials where they talk to you right, later right. on how you can get rich sure. in two years or less. And then you've got uh, some of the commercial guys going through the numbers. Right. 
I'd like to take us back to 40 years ago, the research that was done at UC Berkeley, Stanford, other universities, and it led to what was called the capital asset pricing model. As a result of that, three Nobel Prizes in economics were awarded. And here's the basic concept, and I'll make it very, very simple because I just covered this in a class at the college earlier today. Imagine that you wanted to invest your money. What does the average person face? He goes to the bank, but basically they pay you almost nothing. Less than a point now. Well, yeah. when I went through bankrate.com and I Googled and I looked at their numbers, the three large out-of-state banks that control 90% of all the deposits in Maricopa County, the Phoenix, Scottsdale, Mesa area, are Bank of America, Wells Fargo, and Chase. And if you give them 100000 they give you 0.1%, which means they'll give you $100 back, but that's not all, folks. Remember, there's an early withdrawal penalty. So if you absolutely need the income, out of the goodness of their heart, they say, we'll let you take your $8.33 a month out, and we won't penalize you. So go out and enjoy. Now, if you give them a $1 million on a one-year CD, you get $1,000 or $83 a month. So the banks aren't working. Wall Street, we've had two big crashes within the last 10 years. The dot-com boom, then the crash, and the phony real estate boom, and then the crash, which led to the Great Recession we're in. And so that hasn't worked for a lot of people. So the capital asset pricing model says, imagine you could put together a portfolio of assets, investment assets. Here's the bottom line. How do you get the maximum return for a given acceptable level of risk or vice versa for a rate of return you want? How do you minimize the risk? And I'm going to cover this as part of the show because, Tom, that's what you wanted me right, to absolutely, do. Absolutely. Absolutely. So let's before you get into that, let's talk about today's numbers when it comes to real estate. Um, I know you pulled some of the stats. Um, better, worse, flat, same? It seems like it's been uh, trending since October with the new listings. We're right around 10,000 and then uh, new listings. And then uh, active listings about right around 22,000. It's been in the last four months. And uh, sold listings about 5,800. So how's that compare to the, to the last couple of years? That's, that's oh. way up. It's certainly a seller's market at this point. Yes. It's, it's converted into a seller's market at this point. Mm -hmm. So the, the it, buyer's market, a lot of the, the values are going up. So now it's a time to sell because there's less, excuse me, there's more demand, more demand and less, less yeah. inventory that's, that's out there. So now it's a good, better time to sell. Absolutely. So I know you're, you're actually hiring more agents. So that means, and I've heard that from a lot of agents, that mm -hmm. they're hiring people. So the outlook must be pretty rosy. And I know a lot of the media still says, that, you know, it's still kind of flat. Things could turn around. You know, I might want to bring up the, the Dow Jones. It's, it's up over 14,000 a couple times in a row. Is that something that's going to hurt us in the long run because it's going up too fast. And, and, you know, I think I asked Marvin Clark this question in a panel that he did a couple of days ago um, that talked about, does, do, do I think or does he think the values are going up too fast? Is the stock market getting too crazy too fast? Is this a sign of things overcorrecting, perhaps? Well, the actually, the retail investor, ever since the 2008 crash, has pulled money. Uh, uh, the statistics show they pulled money out of the stock market because they were deathly afraid after losing 20, 30, 40, 50 percent of their life savings. Right, right. Uh, the reason the stock market's so high is come from the Federal Reserve policy. Ben Bernanke, chairman of Federal Reserve, admitted two years ago yes. on the most boring TV station channel there is, C-SPAN. He was testifying in front of Congress, and what he said is, I'm keeping interest rates down to virtually zero for two reasons. One, we've loaned over $2 trillion to Wall Street and big banks at no more than a quarter percent interest. That's to bail them out. This is on top of the $800 billion bailout that was very politically unpopular about four years ago. So imagine two trillion and a quarter percent interest. So that's why the banks aren't paying us any more because right. they, they can right. borrow all they want from Monco right. Sugar. Good, good for people buying homes with low interest rates. But those that are retiring or have money that they need to live on, th their rate of return has dropped almost to nothing. Before I forget, we're, we're starting to take calls. I didn't even throw out the phone you know, number yet, but let's throw out really, the phone really number. Really quick, I just wanted to mention uh, I ran a, um, a contest last week for in the know with uh, Tom Diller here. Um, people that liked our Facebook. We went ahead and said, hey, if we get 1,500 likes, we're going to give away several um, VIP tickets out there to the Good Life Festival 
um, that we have with uh, chefs Tyler Florence and Duff Goldman from the Food Network that are going to be down there this weekend. So celebrity chefs, gourmet food. It's going to be a fantastic wine time. Wine tasting, yeah. Wine Great tasting. Time. It's going to be Beautiful fantastic. Place. So I'm going to give away um, I'm give away three sets of tickets during Sweet. this show here. Cool. Um, and all you have to do when you call in, so if you want the tickets, you have to say, I love Tom. I, no matter of fact, I love Tom Diller. And there, then if you say, you I love Tom Diller, you get a pair of tickets to the Good Life Festival this weekend. And I'm going to start taking calls. If you want to call in, you don't have to go live on the air. If you want to give me a message, I'll jump in for Dr. Wong, for uh, Tom Diller, Sally Shino. Take it away, Tom. Absolutely. Phone number to call in is 480-745-1033. So call in if you have a question for Dr. Harold Wong or Sally Shino. Again, the call-in number is 480-745-1033. You can also chat online. Okay. Uh, but this is just extremely this is just extremely interesting. You know, they, they keep the rates down low. A lot of people don't think about the ad, mm-hmm. adverse effect of that. Um, so you talked about $100,000 in the bank. The rate of return is nothing, point, point 0.1, right? Not even 1%. So less, point one a fraction of 1%. Uh, let's get back to the title of the show. How does real estate investing reduce traditional portfolio risk? So let's talk about what you would do with that hundred thousand. So the the individual out there has got a hundred grand sitting in the bank. Dumb thing to do. It seems it feels nothing safe. It's in the bank. It. Nothing can happen to it. W- what would you know? You're sitting around drinking drinking a glass of wine or something. You've got your fifty sixty thousand friends listening to you in your living room. What would you tell them to do with the money? Well, I'll get back to the efficient frontier and how real estate is a non-correlated assets because it's a little technical. Sure. I'm going to come back to that a little later. Okay. But to just answer your question, let me give you a live example. A uh, year ago, met a couple. They operate one of the remaining few salmon processing plants on the richest river in Alaska. When I say the richest river, meaning the salmon has okay, over excellent. 30% fat content. So this is primo, primo. And they said, I've got a million dollars. I can't earn anything in the bank. I'm deathly afraid of the stock market. So what I do? So they just caught up a realtor. She bought him a house, and prices were lower then. So they bought a $100,000 house, and they're getting $1,000 a month of rent. Sure, they got real estate taxes, insurance, right. but since he knows how to do his own repairs, that's not a problem. So they may net nine to even 10000 a year. On the hundred thousand, they bought it without a mortgage, free and clear. So that's a nine to ten percent rate of cash flow. Yeah, uh, you can't get that anywhere in a bank. You can't get that loaning to Uncle Sam. A ten-year Treasury note only pays one point five to two percent. You can't get that a municipal bond, a corporate bond. You can't even get it by speculating and buying Greek bonds because they're only paying about eight nine eight percent. And then, of course, you could get wiped out when they go for bailout number three. So uh, this uh, real estate is something that it's not for everyone, but if you can handle the three T's that scare most people, tenants, trash, and toilets, <laughs> you can get a rate of cash flow and control. It's not like a stock where you can wake up and find out, hey, I've invested 100000 in Enron. I got nothing because the company was fraudulent. Right, right. And I got nothing. It collapsed to zero. The, uh, in real estate, the nice thing is, the, the big boys don't always control it. When you get that deed to a house, it's yours. Mm-hmm. Right, yours to control. Uh, amazing amount of calls coming in, and unfortunately, the first set of calls are for the tickets, but uh, which is good because they won some tickets. Becky Clark of Scottsdale, you got a pair. Don Goodman of Pine Top, you have a pair. And Perry Edmonds of Phoenix gets a pair of tickets. And Encanto is just absolutely beautiful. And Cantera. And Cantera. Right, yeah, right. I went out there to see the Sticks concert with you and your family. Right, and, absolutely. Uh, which was kind of cool. So. And so if you're calling in, we may give away another couple since we went so quick. I, I may give away two more pairs, but you got to hang tight. We'll, if we do, it'll be at the end of the show. So don't call in right now unless you have a question for Dr. Wong, Sally Shino, or Tom Diller. Yeah, absolutely. But uh, thank you so much for listening. And please don't drop off. Keep listening. We've got some good stuff coming here. So let's let's get back into the discussion that you wanted to talk about uh, where the Nobel Prizes were, were given out. So the, the capital asset pricing model is a way of understanding how to get to the efficient frontier, which is the optimal mix in your investments between risk and return. And if you go to Wall Street, they only have two asset classes, technically three, cash, stocks, and bonds. But since they don't want you to keep the cash in cash, otherwise they can't charge big fees, it basically comes out of stocks and then bonds. So you're down to two asset classes. 
when you look at all the research, it's not enough diversification. They think diversification is giving you a big company stock, a small company stock, an international stock. But guess what? When you have a crash and the stock market tanks, it all goes down and you lose up to half your life savings or more. So in c- comparison to that, a non-correlated asset means that when your other traditional assets like stocks and bonds crash, this other asset goes up okay. and it, it protects you because not all of your investments are going down. A non-correlated asset could be agriculture commodities. Just in the last three years, soybeans have quadrupled and gone up four or five fold in price. So the farmers are making a ton of money or investors in farm. Right, land. right. It could be precious metals. What do you think about gold? Talk gold. about gold. I mean, gold is at what, 16, 14, 15, 1600 bucks? Uh, in, in gold and silver over the last 10 years, you would have made probably about a 15 to 20% compounded return, right. far you know, exceeding anything right. in the, the stock market. Right. Let me jump in since he's mentioned sure. gold and silver. We just had a call. Um, Brett from Paradise Valley, a different Brett than that. I believe Brett was on there too. Um, he says, Dr. Wong, do you think real estate is still the way to go, or do you recommend changing currencies to gold and silver? Uh, well, actually, we went off the gold standard here a long time ago. Here's in the U.S. Here's what I suggest. Uh, it really comes down, honestly, in my experience, there's only about 1% or 2% of the population that can really stand the emotional struggle of managing their own rental property. But that doesn't mean you can't invest in real estate. you got to find a partner or a professional manager that will deal with the three T's, tenants, trash, and toilets. Right now, you got to remember, gold is always historically been a measure of fear. The moment things stabilize and people aren't afraid of the economy or foreign wars, gold crashes. I've seen the, the gold booms and crashes over the last 40 years. Well, if you want to control something, real estate is something good to control because of the cash flow you can get. Now, what if you want super cash flow? I spent time with about 20 or 30 commercial real estate guys and a CEO of some gas and oil companies, and we're talking about the Bakken. If you want to go to the big boom, the Bakken is the gas and oil boom in North Dakota. Let me give you an idea of what kind of cash flow can be generated. Uh, There is a project that the guy wants me to fund, and if you get four 900 square foot cabins, and sort of think of as a mini fourplex, uh, the gross rent on that for each one is three thousand a month. So you got you got twelve thousand a month for your hundred fifty to two hundred thousand dollar investment. Why? It's economics. There are fifty thousand people in the Bakken. They're living in man camps which are basically like modern military dormitories, but they still charge 100 to $130 a day. So there are 50,000 living in man camps, living in RVs, crammed into hotel rooms. The average hotels are going for 150 to $200 a Where day. Where is this? Wow. The Bakken, North Dakota. the gas and oil boom. Yeah. Just, just recently, this past year, the Bakken passed either... Alaska or California is the number two oil producing state in the whole U.S. It's only behind Texas. Almost sounds like the olden days, the gold rush, where every, there's a big camp. That all comes all of a sudden overnight. All of a sudden overnight, pe- hundreds of people are camped out and they're panning for gold. But in this case, they're digging for black gold. Or it's actually true. One of the yeah. guys uh, trying to get funding for his project, uh, who's presenting his project where he wants investors to fund, he was wearing a beard. This because uh, the conference was just two weeks ago, and he came down to Scottsdale, so it's January in Scottsdale where it's fairly warm. He says, "Here's why I'm wearing a beard. I got frostbite out there." Another guy with the project said, uh, "When I went up there two years ago, I had to sleep in my car for three months because there's no place to stay." But he made uh, a bundle of money, right? Well, he, he's got some big projects. Another two yeah. guys said we were stuck in our car in a snowstorm for two days. And we almost froze to death. Another guy said, I had four heaters inside my dwelling, four heaters underneath, and there is still ice in the morning on the walls. So it is just like the boom. Uh, There are millions to be made, and the former governor was there, and the economic development director, they said, anything you want to do, we need. If you want to be an accountant, you want to be a CPA, 
you want to be a realtor, you want to be a dentist, anything you want to do. They need it up there. We need it. Yep. We got a couple more phone calls. You know, we even have up. people listening from planes flying traveling right now nice. up on the chat. Um, <laughs> no kidding. Absolutely. Sarah from Des Moines says, how long do you think this $3,000 per month type of uh, money will hold out, though? Well, let's just go through the numbers. $3,000 a month divided by 30 days in a month is $100. So as long, think about it this way, would you rather be in a hotel room for $150 a night, and yes, you get maid service, and there's a restaurant there, or would you rather be in a 900 square foot, think of it as a one bedroom, your own cabin or apartment, where you, you don't have to have strangers coming in, and it's cheaper. Now, what if you have a roommate? Now, two of you are sharing the 900 square foot cabin, and now each guy is paying $50 per night. As you know, I don't believe you can even stay at Motel 6 in most major cities for $50 a night. In the old days, it was called Motel 6 because literally they charged $6 a night. Oh, no kidding. How long has this been going on up there? <laughs> uh, this, the, the, the big boom occurred about four years ago uh -huh. when, when they married two technologies. Most gas and oil wells, you drill straight down 10,000 feet but they use two technologies once you get the hole down you drill horizontal and then you add fracking fracking is where you pour sand and mixture of chemicals and it literally imagine it goes out and it cracks the formation and you suck it back and now that the formation's cracked gas and oil comes out of that right. and okay. to give you an idea of how powerful the technology is they showed a picture of two oil wells. One of the speakers there, the old oil well, was on his family's farm. The one with the modern technology across the road is producing 50 times the gas and oil using this modern technology. So this is relatively new. This technology only really occurred about starting in about 2007, 2008. Mm -hmm. so, uh, but in only that short few years, North Dakota has gone from almost nothing to the second largest oil state in America. And projections are North Dakota and this technology is what could, within 10 to 20 years, get America energy independent. Now, why is that important? Because now we're not s uh, siphoning off hundreds of billions and trillions going to oil countries that hate our guts and pay bounties to kill your kids and grandkids in the wars overseas. Right. You know, it's funny because the last couple of years, I know North Dakota has been in the news as one of the best places to live when it comes to finding jobs, that sort of thing. But I tell you, I've been to South Dakota and Minnesota. Oh, my gosh. It just gets uh, unbelievably cold, like nine months out of the year. I think I may be exaggerating with the nine months, but it's pretty cold there. I know we got a couple more calls. So Bill, from, Bill from Paradise Valley says, uh -huh. well, since this is a real estate show, you must have some people uh, ready to help us find some quad flexes out there in that area. Who can they? Who can he use? In Bill from Paradise Valley, North Dakota. Uh, you, yeah, you know. Um, or are you teasing Bill? We're teasing you, Bill. <laughs> uh, th there are no realtors up there. And we do now. Um, <laughs> you know, I tell you what, uh, Sally Sheen. I want you to throw out your information. I know you you don't live in North Dakota, but I'm sure uh, you can go through the NAR or whatever and do some referrals. Uh, but you know, Sally is, is wonderful here locally in the valley. And, and Sally, what's your what's your contact information? Oh, he can go to sallysheeno.com and register there with all the information, and uh, I'll get a hold of him. Okay, why don't you lean a little bit more this way so you can talk? See where the sweet spot is right there. Right here. Yeah, I was looking at your, your cheeks, but the sweet spot on the microphone is <laughs> <laughs> just trying to make her laugh. Trying to make her feel at home, huh, Joe? So He's doing a good job. <laughs> Joe, say you're looking good because you are looking pretty good. But, yeah, that's a sweet spot right there. So we want to make sure you speak up a little louder. So uh, one more time on your contact information so they've got it out there. At sallysheno.com at 480-326-1851. Appreciate every, uh, every, all the calls and all the listeners out there. Again, if you want to call in, it's 480 745 one zero three three. We have just a couple more minutes here before our first break. Um, great, great conversation. Mm -hmm. Let's let's uh, kind of focus back in and maybe do a micro analysis of, of Arizona itself um, and talk about the buying opportunities here that you may see. Um, obviously, I still tell people it's a great time to buy. I still think every the homes are at a bargain when you can find homes. Uh, you talked about the three T's. Um, that's when you hook up with a good property manager. And Sal, I don't know if you want to talk about that in just a little bit, but. Uh, what would you recommend here? I mean, the values go back down. You're still making your monthly rent. It's really a paper loss unless you want to sell immediately. So talk about the long-term investment 
I guess, avenue of buying houses? And should somebody, if they have 100000 split that up by two houses, by one house? Uh, let me tell you what's happening uh, with the big boys. For the first time in history, Wall Street money has come in to places like Arizona starting about two years ago. I was at a conference, the annual real estate conference in Arizona, sponsored by the Arizona Republic, for which I write the only column of money in the community section. And here's what happened. One of the speakers there said that two, three years ago, he was just sitting in his house here in the Chandler area and thinking about investing in real estate. Then he bought a few. But even a millionaire only has so much money. Right. Then he got access to Wall Street money. Bottom line, uh, his company now holds, uh, I think, about 1,500 homes right here. And other competitors are coming in where they're saying their orders to the buyers are go buy 2,000 homes, buy 3,000 homes. Now, that's trouble for the individual investor because a lot of these people are bidding 20 30% over what a normal individual investor would do. And they don't care because they got all this money. It's got to go in. So Wall Street is making a bet in single-family homes in a way they have never done before. Uh, Whether it'll work out for them uh, depends on whether they can manage thousands of homes because they're they're going to find it's a lot different scenario than when you spend $200 million for a shopping center or big office complex, and you just got to manage that one location. Right. Is is the mom and pop investor being pushed out of the market here, or is there still pl- plenty well, of opportunity? They just have to look harder. Well, I get the feedback from people at the real estate club. Yeah, over the last two years, they've been pushed out of the foreclosure auctions because they don't want to pay those prices. But here's the news. Uh, the big Wall Street money is leaving Phoenix and has left and going to other areas where they think are at the bottom of the economic cycle. Sure. So Sweet. now the feedback I get from individual investors, they're they're having a less like a lot less competition. Uh-huh. They're able to actually go in and buy now. Good, good. More calls there. Uh, Lindsay from Phoenix said, I thought that was you. Great job. Always read your column. All right. Yeah, we forgot to mention that when we talked about your background. That's uh, one of the many things that Dr. Wong does. And I know you hold a lot of free seminars. Uh, you get in front of folks about investing and retirement, that sort of thing. We can talk about that when we come back from break. Um, Sally, what, what are you seeing in the investment market as a realtor? Are you seeing a lot of guys coming out with cash still or people just traditional 3.5% down, 20% down? What, what are you seeing out there? I still see the investors looking for those homes that are under $150,000. But not the corporate investors that, that Harold no. just met. You're talking about the... The guy who wants to buy one or two houses. Right, yeah. Yeah. Like under $150,000 and stuff and paying cash mm-hmm. and trying to get that 1000 a month, $1,200 a month rent. Right, But right. I'll, I'll tell you, Sally, leverage is great mm-hmm. because I priced it out with a mortgage bank recently, and up to your first four loans that you have, you only have to put 20% down, and you can get non-owner-occupied financing or basically investor loans at only 4.5%. If you've got great credit, 4.5% interest, 30-year fix. Mm-hmm. Investors have never been able to get anything this low before. Right. So if you lock that in, rents are only going to go up if you look over the next 5, 10, 20 years. So you're going to get an increasing spread. And if you hold it long enough, theoretically, for 30 years, you're going to have a free and clear piece of real estate. Absolutely. They'll be paying rent to your kids and your grandkids as right. long as they hold it. Right. Mm-hmm. We're going to take one more call here before we go to break here. Uh, Candace from New River, she's a realtor out in the East Valley, says, how long before uh, you think the East Valley will bounce back to where we can actually make some money selling? Well, actually, uh, we, ha- we are seeing prices going up substantially. In certain parts of the Phoenix area in the last 15 months, we've seen prices on single-family homes go up 20 to 30%. Now, if you're talking about the East Valley, now, Sally specializes in an area. She actually lives very close to the Intel plants. Uh, for those that don't live here, the key to the silicon in the desert is Intel that decided years ago to build three major plants, and that's why the median income in Chandler, Arizona, where the Intel plants are, happens to equal where Scottsdale is. So what's happening is they just built the most modern fab plant there. In fact, it was so famous, President Obama actually flew out uh, to right, see. Right, right. They right. had the, the, the world's biggest land-based crane that they used to build the thing. And Sally, why don't you tell the listeners and viewers how many thousands of engineers are coming out and how soon? Uh, there's probably about 2,000 engineers coming out sometime in May. 
So can you imagine, and that's why in certain prestige developments mm -hmm. like Fulton Ranch, I have heard scuttlebutt that literally one-fourth to half of all the buyers for these expensive three to 600,000 homes are basically Intel employees. Right. Both of my neighbors are Intel employees. I live in Arden Park, which is in Chandler, right just down the street from where Sally lives. And the values have just started to skyrocket, which is great news. And we're going to take a break. You've been listening to In the Know with Tom Diller, KQCK Live. We'll see you back in about 90 seconds or so. And we hope you call in. And again, thank you. We love all your listeners that, that are out there. So we'll see you in just a little bit. Are you ready to start taking control of your future and maximize your earning potential? Central Arizona College has smaller class sizes and personalized attention to help you compete in today's tough job market. CAC now serves Santan Valley and Queen Creek. The C Queen Creek. The CAC Santan Center is located in the shops at Copper Basin on Hunt Highway behind Barrow's Pizza. Stop in and see how taking classes at CAC costs a fraction of a state university and your credits can transfer. So if you want to earn real money, you need to learn real skills at Central Arizona College. Enroll in classes today by calling 480-677-7825 or visit www.centralaz.edu or call 480-677-7825 or visit www.centralaz.edu Central Arizona College Your college, your way Are you having plumbing or septic problems? No worries Call Cartwright's Queen Creek Plumbing and Septic Service been in the valley since 1996, family owned and operated, proudly serving East Valley and surrounding areas. With a full range of services from drain cleaning, septic tank pumping, general maintenance and repairs, inspections for the sale of your home. They provide excellent and courteous service for all your plumbing and septic needs. We're not satisfied till you are satisfied. Licensed, bonded, and insured. Call today. Cartwrights, Queen Creek Plumbing and Septic Service. Contact Denise at 480-987-8051. That's 480-987-8051. Our family pets are such a big part of our lives. That's why Kelly's Critter Clips of Queen Creek and Sun Lakes has been providing pet grooming services for over 10 years. Your dog's comfort is very important to us, so we take the time to treat your pet with care, love, and professional attention it deserves. We welcome any size and breed and feature shampoo and conditioning, styling, flea and tick dips, ear cleaning, nail trimming, and so many other services that will leave your pet looking good and smelling good and feeling great, all at an affordable price. Located in Queen Creek and Sun Lakes, call now for an appointment, 480-655-5066. Kelly's Critter Clips. <coughs> Welcome back, everybody, to KQCK Live. Sorry for the couple seconds of dead air there, but Sally was winking at me, and I lost all train of thought. I don't know if it's Tom her new hairdo. Tom gets a little flustered when I, stuff like that happens. She makes me flustered. She, her goal, she said she was a little, little tiny bit nervous, but you can't tell she's nervous. She's such a professional. Um, so I'm probably making her more nervous by saying she's nervous. But uh, yeah, now her goal is to make me nervous. That's and right. She caught me off guard just a little bit. So and I want to thank everyone won. that's calling in and uh, with all your great comments and uh, and whatnot. Uh, keep them coming, and we will definitely relay um, all your questions and whatnot. Uh, it's a great time to great time to ask them with a world class economist here in the house. Absolutely. Again, the phone number are four eight zero seven four five one zero three three. And and you know, there's been about twenty or thirty calls coming in at once. So keep trying to get in. We apologize if you, if you don't, but certainly we'll put both of their contact informations up online so you can see that a little bit later if you want to contact them afterwards. And, and Harold, why don't you throw out your contact information? Uh, yes. Uh, the easiest way to reach me is by email, Harold Wong, numeral one, at yahoo.com. That's H-A-R-O-L-D-W-O-N-G, numeral one, at yahoo.com. Or I do have a phone number, the private bat line, that only I pick up, only I have access to, is 480-706-0177. But I want to stress, if you do email me, be very specific in the subject headline so I can respond. This morning I had 50,000 messages in my inbox, and when I give seminars, I always say, I only open 20 a day, so 
make sure on the subject headline you know yours will be one of the 20 that I opened that day. Excellent. Well, you are a popular man. So, I, again, I want to thank you for coming all the way out here to uh, beautiful Santan Valley. So I, we do appreciate it, and we know you're a busy, busy man. Sally, before we get back to Harold— a couple more things on – she's laughing because I told her I was going to go straight to Harold. Uh, a couple more things on the, the market or the economy in, in the Chandler East Valley area. I know it's, actually Queen Creek is, is bouncing back tremendously. Um, adversely, on the other side of the valley, Verado is bouncing back incredibly. A lot of people – in fact, that's one of the top 10 places to buy right now, believe it or not, because they fell so hard. So it kind of makes sense there. What's, what's the average days on the market? You, are we seeing multiple bids still oh, on properties? Oh, oh, yeah, for sure. The average day is about 48 days. 48 like days. So that's quick. That's boom. You go through your inspections, get your loan, get the thing closed, and you're closing. So it's very quickly. So is that inversely driving up the prices even more? It's we talked about home. Intel. That's certainly a big indicator there. But just Well, there's such a demand out there, too, and it's driving up all the prices. And uh, we're back to that multiple offer. It's, so, again, it's, it's, seller's market, it's a good time to sell if you have to. And what about short sales? Still happening out there? Is there still a lot of folks that... Yeah, it seems like there's quite a few short sales going on, too. But yeah. Well, good. Well, good. Well, well, thank you for that. And, and Harold, I kind of cut you off before. You were talking about the capital asset pricing model and just just that sentence, capital asset pricing model, sounds kind of scary. I mean, it sounds like it's, it's... You can probably talk about that for hours. So let's give it your, your best radio try here and, and break that All down right. to... So let, let's go to what correlation is. A perfect correlation if one one thing, say, for example, uh, corn prices go up, soybeans uh, prices go up. A opposite correlation is, for example, if interest rates double, the value of your long-term bond actually drops in half. If it, uh, a treasury note, let me explain this to you. A treasury note where you're loaning to Uncle Sam for 10 years basically pays 2% interest. So imagine you wanted to invest $1,000. You would get $20 of interest. So that's not much. But what if a year later, interest rates double to 4% because the Chinese say, hey, you're going to have inflation. You're spending a trillion dollars more than you have for five years in a row, Uncle Sam. You got to pay us 4%. So if you're the world of investors a year later, here's what would happen. You would only invest $500 because you would only need $500 times 4% to earn that same $20 of income. So poor Sally that paid $1,000 for that bond a year ago, if she is to sell that, say, to make the annual payment out of a required minimum distribution from an IRA, guess what? You paid $1,000 for it. A year later, you sell it. You get $500. You lost half mm -hmm. of what you invested. Now, for those of us that are older like me, we remember 30 years ago during the Jimmy Carter heirs, first mortgages were 18%, the primary is 20%. So let's say interest rate go back because we could have high inflation. Mm -hmm. So we go from 2% to 18%. So that's ninefold. So now, if interest rates go up ninefold, your $1,000 bond is worth one ninth or $111. So unlike what most people hear and have heard for decades from Wall Street, where they say stocks may be risky or bonds are safe, no way. We're the lowest interest rates, not just of our lives, our parents' lives, our grandparents' lives. So how much lower can the interest rates go if you look at what they pay in a bank? It's got to go up. So guess what? When the interest rates go up, Bonds are going to get crushed. Now, now the government's actually said 2015 on keeping the, the rates low. So will mortgage rates stay low up until that point, or is that just? Well, it, it, here's the deal. It really comes down to our foreign creditors. We have $16 trillion in debt. It took 60 years to accumulate it. Uh, about a year and a half ago, China passed Japan as our number one creditor, where they hold over a trillion dollars of debt. So really, it, it comes down to a delicate political thing. If I were a foreign creditor and inflation is going to be 4% and I'm getting 2%, I'm losing 2% right there. Right. I would demand not just the 4% to cover inflation. I would demand another 2% on top. So I'm making two. Uh, so I, I demand 6%. Right. But here's the delicate political balance. Because they're our creditor, they may agree to take a loss on loaning us money as long as they can sell as much stuff through Walmart uh, to the U.S. Go to Walmart or any big store. Turn anything upside down. Where is it made? It's made in China. It's not made in the U.S. All right. So guess what? 
We're losing millions of jobs. We're getting poorer. Andrea. China's got millions more of jobs. So they're getting richer. Like and out of what, the what goodness of their heart, they're loaning us the money we use to support our yeah. lifestyle that we can't support. So is the only thing good coming out of these low, traditionally very low interest rates? Because when I got in the market way back when, not as long as you, you know, I was doing 12% mortgages when I started off as a mortgage guy. So these low rates is the only good that's going to come out of these. It's going to make it easier for people to buy houses. So now they need to jump into these homes right now, get a house. Don't worry about the bubble that happened. Don't worry that's it's not going to happen in our lifetime again. Or is there a threat of that happening where they could go completely upside down? If you want to live in a house and treat it as something you live in, not something to speculate Then it's in, just paper loss. Uh, yeah. So this is a perfect right, time right. to buy because you're – your cost of holding that house or your mortgage is it's super cheap. low. Right, right. Absolutely. Right. We took about 10 calls in just the last couple of yeah, minutes here. Yeah, absolutely. And I have a caller uh-huh. on the line right now. Caller. I've got Andrea from Chandler who'd like to make a comment. So, Andrea, do we have you with us? Yes, I'm here. Well, thank you for listening. Go right ahead with your question, Andrea. And you're live on the air. Okay. Hi, my name is Andrea, and I have been working with Sally this last month, and she has been wonderful. She is um, very rea- re- reliable, helpful, and always available, which is so nice in person or even on the phone. Um, I'm so glad I found her and hired her as my realtor. Well, excellent. Um, I would... I would recommend her to anyone looking for a home in this ever-changing market. It's, it's just such a relief to have a person like her working for you. Oh, well, great. Well, we, we so, think a lot about her and we care about her, and that's why she's here. My she's husband she's and great. I are so thrilled, and have, you know, our thrilled to have worked with her, and I'm so grateful. Well, thank excellent. You, well, thank you so much for listening. Us a fun yeah. home. So, thank excellent. you, Andrea. Thank I you appreciate for it very much. Thank you for listening, You're Andrew. welcome. Hey, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you so much. You're bye-bye. welcome. It was so nice of your mom to call in. <laughs> <laughs> that was a joke, by the way. Yeah. Andrea, thank you for listening. We appreciate that. We do think the world of, of Sally, um, she's she's great. Absolutely. And, and I, let me just jump sure, into another please. call here really quick. Uh, Kenny from Queen Creek says, um, do you expect rates to maintain low for at least the next three years, as I hear? Yeah, the government actually came out and said they're going to keep their the rate that they charge each other, the banks, uh, that low until 2015. And, and actually, great question, and thank you for listening. So that's actually what I asked uh, Dr. Wong a second ago. Does that mean that the mortgage rates or that the mortgage rates or interest rates will stay low because of that fact that they're going to yeah, do that? Yeah, as long as our foreign creditors play ball, yeah, uh, the federal government has tremendous power. Now, here's the negative side. If rates stay low for three years, guess what? Added to the last four years, that's seven years of the reverse Robin Hood effect. Uh, Robin Hood was known in literature in the three versions of Robin Hood, the movie. He was popular with the poor because he stole from the rich and gave money and food to the starving peasants. This is the reverse Robin Hood. The $800 billion bailout, the $2 trillion loan to the big banks, the super low interest rates, they are stealing from Main Street, particularly anyone that saves money is getting almost no interest, and the ones that benefit are the big banks and Wall Street. I have no idea why four or five years ago we didn't have Occupy Wall Street, Occupy Big Bank demonstrations on the scale of the anti-Vietnam War, little with hundreds of thousands of people in the streets. Right. I mean... Uh, so that's to what the reverse Robin Hood is. Now, a lot of people are angry, but if I can have a realistic comment, why is it that we don't have demonstrations? Uh, the Roman emperors built the Colosseum in just terrible bloodlust in the Colosseum. And if you looked at all gladiator movies, you had 50,000 people. The stands were packed. They were entertained at someone else's life and death, and they threw out free food and wine at all the festivals. Guess what? The people that really run the country are using sports 
and reality TV. So tens of millions of people watch that. And I admit, I was crushed from my San Francisco 49ers loss to the Super Bowl. Me too. What's up with that? <laughs> but uh, if you look at what people are doing, talk to any librarian. They'll tell you how few adults actually check out a book and read it in a year. Right. And yet we have tens of millions of people watching reality TV and sports. And so basically the people are entertained. And the more they're entertained, the more they won't actually look into what's really happening uh, when the government and Wall Street are basically stealing their life savings. Right, right. Yeah, back to the 49ers. Uh, if Joe Montana was there, they they would have won, definitely. I mean, Joe, I miss Joe Montana, don't you? He's such a good guy. Absolutely, <laughs> but you got to give credit, and it's only a 10th start. Colin Kaepernick. Is that amazing? He, we actually, you know, he did an amazing job, and yeah, it wasn't a miracle for him to come back like that. It was just, I mean, he could have just put his head down, but he didn't. So uh, all you 49er fans out there, uh I think the Niners are poised to become a dynasty. I think they have the people there. They have the talent. They will be a dynasty for the next several years. I, I firmly believe that. Mark my words. Well, I'm certainly hoping for yeah, that. Me, me too. It's back down to the, the discussion at hand here. We're, we're talking about the economy and the real estate in, in, in the market. Nationally, globally, we're talking you know foreign countries. We're, we're talking North Dakota. Um, back down to the the mom and pop investor here and i don't know if you can micro talk about it that way but let's talk about the investors here not the corporate investors let's talk about the folks that are probably listening to us out there how it can help them before you you know hold that thought a couple more calls we didn't get to elizabeth from desert highlands i believe she said desert highlands um she says when do you think the million plus market will drop to a decent selling time Million, well, that's still the market that right now the selling time or the 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 time that the homes sit are still it's still a year plus, and some of it over a million and a half is two and a half years or longer on there. I, I don't have. An, uh, that's what she was saying. Her yeah. neighbor's been a year and a half on the market. Exactly. She wants to sell, yeah. but she's like, "There's no sense of just sitting with a sign yeah. in the yard." They're 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 moving up to about three hundred to six hundred. I see that. Now you could now down. you could move one in 30, 40 days, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. I think she's Sally Shino. No. Sally Shino. <laughs> right. <laughs> So, well, good. That's uh, excellent question, uh, Doctor Wong. Do you have any idea about the luxury market? What, what do you think about the luxury market and how the economy is going now? It's certainly right now anything five hundred thousand dollars or less. Um, that's the sweet spot. Where the sweet spot a year and a half ago was eighty thousand or less, or one hundred twenty-five thousand or less, and now it's more in that uh, white collar area. Mm-hmm. Jumbo luxuries. In fact, we kind of we talked about that two weeks ago, I think, and we were kind of all over the place with that. Well, how do you feel about the luxury, the super jumbo market? Well, here's the deal. As you know, it's partly affected financing by uh, the ability to get jumbo loans. But actually, a large part of the million-dollar-plus home market actually are all-cash transactions. So here's the deal. I'm going to give you some fundamentals that can show you why the real estate market is coming up in Arizona. Uh, Basically, if you look at people moving from California, Arizona, I believe, was number three with uh, just short of 50,000 people moving from California here. Uh, Arizona, I think, is the number two market for in-migration. Phoenix is, I think, was voted uh, number five for best value for vacation. And so here's the deal. When you get people moving in, even if people are coming here just as visitors, a number of those people fall in love with the area, and they eventually they'll retire here or buy a vacation home. So uh, that's why the Phoenix Open is such an economic engine right. for Arizona because it brings a lot of fat cats in. They fly in their private planes, land at the Scottsdale Airport, and they look at here, and at a minimum they say, well, gee, well, why don't I have my company buy me a 500000 condo in North Scottsdale? Unfortunately for the stockholders, uh, they may be stealing from some of the company money when really they would be buying it personal. But again, if they come in a corporate jet, they could do the right thing, just buy personally, not with the company money. Absolutely. And I, I'm going to go ahead. I just gave away another set of tickets to Glenda Payne and a guest uh, from Apache Junction because Glenda Payne actually wrote a song called it, I Really Love Tom Diller. <laughs> so I figured, you know what, if you did that, and she was singing it to me, and it was actually pretty good. Was it? That's awesome. Um, well, record it and send it over in an MP3. Would and- you please? Because you know what? I'll put, that, I'll put that on commercials and everything. I'm awesome. serious. It was that good. And you know, we'll have you as a guest, and, and you know what? Uh, send your picture. I, I'm single. <laughs> Maybe I'll take you to the Encanto thing or whatever and, and, <laughs> and i'm going to give away one more pair of tickets okay. to Excellent. uh 
to that in Canto. Uh, Encantero, I know. I'm now. sorry about that. Uh, to um, the Food Network, big thing out at Encantero. It's going to be a great time this weekend. You come say hello to myself out there. I don't know. You're not going to be there, are you, Tom? I'm going to actually be in Napa. I won a It's going to be in Napa Valley. Oh, I, Napa I feel really do. bad for you. Actually, what's quite ironic, it, it's going to be on foreign investors. Um, I won this thing through one of my associations to go out there with uh, very just a handful of people. We're staying right in Napa Valley at the <clears> Sonoma <throat> Fairfield or whatever, one of those big fancy hotels or whatever. But folks from all around the country uh, will be there talking about foreign investments. So big topic, huge topic, especially here in, in, in Arizona. So, yeah, back to the – do we get a couple more calls? Or he's taking one now. But uh, So the luxury market, uh, the the person who called in, uh, I think it could be a while before that completely corrects itself. Uh, absolutely, because even among – the rich, I'm not talking about the super rich that have a billion dollars or uh, two or three hundred million dollars, but even among what we normal folks consider rich, those that have, you know, two to five to ten million dollars of net worth, when you they think about plunking down a million dollar and a half for a house that's not even their primary house, uh, that's, that's uh, the huge consideration. Because remember, if they had ten million dollars in the stock market, during the 2008 crash, okay. in many cases, they lost 40%. And it's taken five years for the stock market to get back to that. So they don't take it lightly. Right. It's one thing to buy a millionaire and a half dollar house. When you've got a $10 million net worth, everything's booming, and you think you're going to go to $20 million within five years. Right. And then right. the reality of dropping from 10 to $6 million. Yeah. It's not like investing fifty to 100000 So at that level, are you, do you foresee perhaps a lot of seller carrybacks and a lot of alternate types of financing. Yeah, you're going to have to go back to the creative real estate finance techniques that were used 30 years ago during the savings and loan crisis where you couldn't get loans or you shouldn't get loans, not at 18% for right. a first mortgage. Right, right. A couple more calls there, Joe. Yeah, I want to go ahead and uh, congratulate John Hill of Mesa, who loves Tom Diller. Nice, Great. thank you. John. He was a little hesitant to say to us, "Do I really have to say that?" I'm like, well, "What do you say?" It depends how you say. He's if like, you say I, it kind he, of with a whisper, like, that's kind of weird. But if you goes, say it like manly, I well, love Tom Diller. That's kind of yeah. He was like, "Well, I love Tom Diller." I'm like, "You really do, don't you?" Yeah. <laughs> and he didn't say anything. But <laughs> congratulations, John. Well, thanks, John. I appreciate and, and guys, you. We, we're out of tickets right now, so uh, you know you can call in with questions if you want. We still got a couple minutes, maybe a, a minute or two left, just to take questions. Uh, other than that. Congratulations to all of you winners out there. We'll see you this weekend. And yeah, thank you for liking us on Facebook, and thank you for listening. So, um, okay, let's jump off the jumbo market. Let's let's get back down to what if you have, you know, you're the average investor. You got a little bit of money in the bank. Um, you know, it seems like in the last couple of years, property management companies have popped out of everywhere. So there's certainly a need for that. So there's certainly a lot more investment properties out there. Any areas not to buy in Arizona? Well, again, let's go through the numbers because uh, mm -hmm. a lot of people say, okay, what if I have 100000 or less? Right. Here's the nice thing that, again, in single-family houses, you can still get up to your first four loans with 20% down, 4.5%, 30-year fixed rate loan if you've got great credit. Right, right. And so what that means is if you've got 100000 down, not counting the closing costs, you could buy maybe up to 500,000 real estate, which could be four 125,000 or houses that each rent for $1,000 a month. And so, again, if you're willing to do the management yourself, you save a lot, but most people aren't. So you got to, the key to your ability to make profit long term over the next five, 10, 12, 15 years, you got to find a great management company, great management company. Right. Property managers really aren't that expensive. Isn't it like 8 10% of what the rent is? So really, in the, in the scheme of things, yes, that does cut your margins down a little bit, but not a whole lot for, for no headache. They, they do the credit checks. They, they make sure the place is rented. They, they market the place for you. They keep it clean. They take care of the toilets and the trash, that sort of thing. Um, so that could be a good thing. Uh, we're just getting calls off the hooker. We have a call. All right, you're, you're live on the air here. Um, we've got Kathy from Acatillo. Kathy. All right, you're, you're live on the air here. Get your radio a little loud yes. there, Kathy. Okay, go ahead. Hi, I want to shout out to Sally Shino and send some love to her. Sally is just well loved. We're figuring that out. I'm not sure if I'm going to bring her back because too many people just love her to they, death. They really do. Yeah, yeah. She's monopolizing all of Harold Wong's time, See but that's okay. You know, if this was scratch sniff uh, TV, you know that she smells great. Say how she looks great good. Her new website looks. It, it does look awesome. Well, we'll it check does. that out when yeah. we'll get some contact information again from Sally out there. Yeah. Hey, thanks a lot, yeah. uh, Kathy from Acadio, for calling in. Thank you. 
Okay, bye-bye. All right. Thank you for bye. listening. We appreciate all our listeners and all our callers. Uh, we just have a few more minutes here. Believe it or not, uh, we only have about six minutes. What I'm going to do is I'm going to throw it over to, to, to you, Dr. Wong. In two minutes, kind of wrap up. Again, you're sitting with a bunch of friends here over a glass of wine. Words of wisdom, last couple things to say in 2013 and, and to create a better future for yourself and your family. Well, I, I believe you should follow the advice of Warren Buffett. He, he, 50 years ago, after coming out of Columbia, where he studied under the legends, Graham and Dodd, Fundamentals of Stock Market Investing, he understood at an early age, if you wanted a dramatically different result than what everyone else is getting, he had to focus on something different. Everyone you deal with in Wall Street, all they're talking about is rate of return. In fact, in almost any investment, they're talking about rate of return. Warren Buffett's rule number one is never lose money. Rule number two is don't forget rule number one. Rule number three is go back and study rule, rule number, number one, one and never lose money. I'll give you an example of Warren Buffett's play in the real estate market. A number of years ago, before the huge boom, uh, but before the bust, see, Warren Buffett understands that nothing goes up forever. So what is the lowest level of housing or in real estate? It's not the million dollar house. It's not the five hundred thousand house that the Intel engineer is going to move in. It's not the hundred fifty thousand star house. It's not even the apartment building. About eight years ago, Warren Buffett bought Clayton Homes out of Tennessee, the largest manufacturer in the U.S. of manufactured housing, which used to be called mobile homes. No kidding. So, no kidding. That's surprising. So when things get bad, which is the lowest level? and the lowest cost, right. where people can literally afford to buy a used uh, single wide for in certain mobile home parks for as little as $12,000. Right, right. Before we take this call, why don't you throw out your contact information one, one more time for us, Dr. Wong. Again, my email is Harold Wong, numeral one at yahoo.com. That's H-A-R-O-L-D-W-O-N-G, the numeral one at yahoo.com, or 480-706-0177. Just understand if you call me, only two things will happen. I will physically pick up the bat phone or you get a voicemail. And because when I'm with patients or clients during the day, I do not answer the phone. It may be a day or two or three before I get back to you. Excellent. Joe, a couple more callers. And sir. I just want to say, uh, you know, hey, it was a good try. The 24 people I talked to that didn't win the tickets, um, I just want to thank you guys for calling in. And let's jump over to our last caller of the show here. That was Shelly. Uh, from Century 21, who I didn't catch where you were from because you hung up too quick. But she says, wow, great show. I'm a first-time listener. You made a new regular. Dr. Wong is a genius. Excellent. Shelly, thank you so much for listening. Right we love on. all thank you realtors you, that are out there, and we're glad that you find this to be good information. Uh, Sally Shino. She just kind of been sitting there looking pretty. She does a great uh, did you job bring of her doing in that. For, I mean, for aesthetics, aesthetics here? Or? Uh, yep. You, I did. Whoa, hey, look at that. I, I did. Like that? And she just she's doing a dynamite doing job great. of that. Uh, Sally Shino, you you you're, you've got a beautiful website. You have a brand new logo. Yes. So you you are adding to your to your real estate firm and you're hiring, you're looking for new people out there. You know, in the, in the next minute and a half, tell us what you're looking for. Maybe there's people out there looking to make a move or I don't know if you train from scratch or you want people that are um, already uh, in the market that looking are selling. For- no, I'm looking for some new buyer agents uh, that are driven and motivated and want to make some money. And so have fun with Sally Shino. Yes, have wow. Fun. Yeah, I so. like that. What's your contact information if they want to get a hold of you, Sally? Uh, they can call me at 480 326 1851, or you can go to my website, sallyshino.com. And where do you work out, just in case they want to? bump into you while you're working out at the mountainside fitness and planet fitness so you in chandler back and forth. here's what you i want stalkers <laughs> do not stalkers do not go there they don't they won't No, i'm just there. saying do not go there oh don't go there stalkers. don't go there unless you're like in spandex or something then you'll fit in right right there you <laughs> yes. go and I, I feel kind of bad for sally she's kind of been sitting there really not doing much I'm are we going to have her back again though i mean soon because I, I don't know it depends if she backhands sally. Sally. The show, you know? maybe we'll talk about my 90 day challenge we got to have you and Let's you know talk what? about your 90. How's we'll that going? We'll have you back in it's full spandex. Day. day 22. <laughs> What's Fantastic. the goal at the end of 90 days? Just continue on. <laughs> she said, "Play." She told me, Maintain. "Playboy." <laughs> I heard that too. I, I absolutely heard that. The Playboy real tradition, from what I understand. <laughs> we're going to do a calendar, right? Oh, yeah. Yes, yes we, we are. are. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, we're just about out of time here. Um, I, I want to thank both of you, um, thank you just for coming out here. I know it's a long drive. And thank you for bringing Dr. Wong out here and 
and I appreciate both of you, the knowledge that you guys bring, the, the information that's just up to date, um, that's just wonderful for all our listeners. You can see we've got listeners from all over the country and, and Arizona calling in. So thank you for our listeners. We love you. You know, I'm Tom Diller. I'm with First American Title Agency, um, and you've been listening to and hopefully watching to In the Know with Tom Diller on KQCK Live in beautiful Santan Valley. We'll see you next Tuesday at 5 o'clock. Thank you so much. Good night, everybody. Thanks for joining us today on In the Know with Tom Diller. We will always continue to strive to bring you the best in guests and to keep you informed on every facet of Arizona's volatile real estate market. Remember to tune in each and every week at 5 p.m. Arizona time exclusively on KQCK radio station. When it comes to real estate and more, be in the know. When you visit Hill Family Dentistry in Santan Valley, dentist Dr. 